Hello, this is Dan with Orbital Guitars, and welcome to part two of this bass build that I'm calling the Gorgon. I begin by cutting a zebra wood board in half for the wings. The full board was too big to cut with my bandsaw or a table saw, so I ended up cutting it by hand. With the board now in two pieces, I go to my bandsaw and cut out the rough shape of each wing. I will then move to my spindle sander and work the wings closer to their final shape. There are a couple more things I want to do before I glue the wings to the neck, the first of which is to fully fine sand the inside edges of the horns, because they are easy to reach with an orbital sander right now, but will be very difficult to sand once they're glued together. The second thing I'll do is to make the body carves on the inside of the horns and fine sand those new surfaces as well, again because this is much easier to do now than it will be after the body is glued together. After that carving is done, I'm ready to glue the wings onto the neck. I use masking tape and super glue to put some blocks in place on the neck which will prevent the wings from sliding out of position while they are being clamped into place. I also put down masking tape in the areas that may get glue squeezed out to make the cleanup easier. Once the glue is dry, I can go to my bandsaw and finally remove the excess length from the body end of the neck. Now that the whole body is together, I'm ready to do the rest of the body carves, starting with the comfort carve on the back.
My plan for this base was always to do a hefty amount of carving, and that decision was reinforced by how heavy the whole thing ended up being. Both Lenge and Zebrawood are dense and heavy hardwoods. I do the bulk of the carving with my angle grinder that has a medium wood carving disc attached, and I follow that with a rasp to smooth out the uneven surfaces that the angle grinder leaves behind, then clean up the rasp marks with a small random orbital sander. I also take this time to carve the transition from the neck to the body. For this build I tried carving it like the heel of a PRS neck. Next I will begin working on the control cavity. The first step will be to drill pilot holes for the knobs all the way through the body so that I will have a location reference for them on the back. I'll follow that with a one and a half inch paddle bit whose corners I filed away to be round, and this will recess the knobs slightly into the body. Now I'll use those reference holes on the back to plan out the size and shape of the cavity, and then drill out most of the material with a forcing bit. I made this control cavity significantly larger than it needed to be, considering the space is only going to have two knobs and no switches, but this extra material that I'm removing will help reduce the overall weight. It also leaves a lot of open room for future modifications. But now it's time to give the drill press a break and switch to a router to finalize the shape of the control cavity. I'll follow that up by using a router bit that's meant for binding channels to create a recess at the top of the cavity for the cover plate. The way I get this bit to make such a wide rather than narrow binding channel is by removing the guide bushing entirely and running the shaft of the bit along the inside of the control cavity. Next I will take the same piece of zebra wood that I used for the headstock veneer and cut another thin sheet of it for the back plate.
I cut it close to shape with the bandsaw, then refine the shape with my spindle sander and make final adjustments to it by hand until it fits. At this point it is quite a bit thicker than it needs to be, so I set up a fence on my spindle sander and use it to thickness sand the cover pipe. I still leave it slightly thicker than it needs to be, but will sand it flush with the back of the body using my large random orbital sander. Now I start working on the pickup cavity for the P-Base pickup. I get things started with my drill press, but unfortunately it can only reach a very small portion of the wood that needs to be removed. It's actually a very small drill press, and I finally replaced it after this build was completed. I will then go back to my router and finalize the pickup cavity. After the routing is done, I drill a hole for the wires to pass through to the control cavity. Then I drill for the output jack. Getting into the finishing touches, I decided to add a small bevel carve to the top of the headstock. Cutting a space for the nut. Now we get to sanding the knob recesses. Doing this by hand is a huge pain, which is why I came up with a better method. I have about a one inch plug of plywood with a screw running through it and a bit of cork on the end. I place the shaft of the screw into a hand drill, then use masking tape and super glue to attach a bit of sandpaper to the cork. The sandpaper can be easily replaced when it inevitably falls off, and you can apply various different grits of sandpaper. Using a slightly oversized bit of sandpaper will also help to slightly round over the edges of the recess. I start with 100, then 220, then 320, after which there is very little left that needs to be done with these recesses. Next I will attach the nut with a few drops of super glue. After it is attached, I used a regular ruler to mark the locations for the outer slots, then use a nut slotting ruler to mark the inner two. All four slots marked, I can start cutting them in.
Once they are cut, I'll use sandpaper to round over the corners of the nut and to smooth all of its surfaces. And then it's time to finish. For this build, I'm using the guitar finishing oil from Crimson Guitars, one light coat on the neck, and about three coats on the body for a nice satin finish. After the oil is dry, I coat the pickup cavity, control cavity, and the inside of the back plate with shielding paint. Drilling for the bridge attachment screws. Attaching the bridge. Yes, there is a ground wire under it. Placing the foam blocks underneath the pickups. Attaching the pickups. Installing the jack. Installing the tuners.
and finally installing the strap locks. Which brings us to the end of part two of the space build. The full build and demo should be up next week. Social media links are in the description, as well as my business email and a link to my reverb shop where you can find any of my guitars that are currently up for sale, and some guitar body design routing templates for those who may be interested in building their own versions of my designs. And let me know if this body design is one you would like to see a template for. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you for the next installment.